Wait, is SpaceX actually delaying NASA's return to the moon and giving China the upper hand? That's the story making headlines, but behind the scenes, it's way more complicated. Some NASA insiders are using the so-called Starship delays as a political weapon, pushing their own agendas, while public pressure in Washington reaches a boiling point. With China racing ahead toward a permanent moon base, and fears growing that the U.S. is falling behind the narrative of delay has become the perfect cover story. But here's the twist SpaceX may have turned the whole situation on its head. What if Starship HLS's timeline slip is exactly what NASA and humanity need, one that could actually give America the edge in this new moon race? Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. You know the drama around Artemis 3's landing date isn't exactly breaking news. Controversy has practically been baked into NASA's Artemis program since day one. Let's rewind for a second. Remember when Artemis 3 was supposed to land in 2024? Yeah, that was the target announced by the Trump administration back in 2019. It sounded bold, maybe even inspiring. But to most people inside NASA, it was a laughably impossible deadline, three to four years ahead of what engineers were actually planning for. Still, everyone played along. Why? Because that announcement lit a fire under the program. It forced NASA to move to fund to choose. And soon the spotlight landed on a new kind of player, SpaceX, with its ambitious Starship human landing system. Suddenly, the moon wasn't just a dream, it was a race. But as always, reality has a way of crashing the party. NASA's safety panel now warns that Starship's lunar lander could face serious delays even as the agency officially targets a 2027 landing. Leaked timelines paint a clearer picture. SpaceX is aiming for an orbital refueling test in June 2026, an uncrewed Starship landing in June 2027, and a crewed Artemis 3 mission in September 2028. Sounds optimistic, right? Well, not everyone's buying it. Some insiders think even those milestones are wishful thinking that the real timeline could slip by years. Meanwhile, there's growing unease in Washington. China's lunar ambitions are accelerating, and that's lighting a fire under NASA's leadership. Administrator Duffy has already announced plans to open up the human landing system contract, to more competition citing SpaceX's delays. Both SpaceX and Blue Origin were told to deliver accelerated landing plans by October 29th. And here's where things get political. Many believe Duffy's decision isn't just about progress, it's about optics. The goal to ensure Artemis lands again before the current presidential term ends in 2028. It's a move that plays perfectly into the growing fear of falling behind China and the lingering legacy of Trump's moonshot promise. But behind the scenes, whispers are growing louder. Some suspect the next contract could be a rigged deal favoring Lockheed Martin and the so-called old space coalition companies that thrive on cost-plus contracts and slow-moving bureaucratic guarantees. For anyone who's been following SpaceX for a while, it's no secret Starship was the boldest and most technically capable choice for getting humans back to the moon. In fact, from NASA's perspective, it was also the cheapest option by far. SpaceX wasn't building a one-off lunar lander. They were already going all in on Starship for Mars and for Starlink. So instead of bidding on an expensive custom-built lunar system, they simply proposed a modified version of a rocket they were already developing. And under the Artemis contract, Starship HLS is a fixed price deal. That means NASA only pays when SpaceX actually hits a milestone, a stark contrast to the old cost-plus system that's notorious for ballooning budgets and endless delays. But here's the paradox, and it's a big one. While Starship might be technically the best long-term solution, it's arguably the worst choice for doing things quickly. This isn't a small capsule. It's a gigantic, ultra-complex vehicle, one that completely rewrites how we travel between Earth and the Moon. It's ambitious. It's revolutionary. And it was always going to take time. 
At the moment of its selection, this should have been obvious to everyone Starship's development curve was bound to stretch years longer than traditional designs. And that's not even the only delay factor. The Artemis architecture itself has become a massive logistical web, a patchwork of new space and old space companies, each with their own timelines, contractors, and red tape. NASA's own space launch system, for instance, has been delayed for over a decade. The Orion Crew capsule's heat shield damaged during Artemis 1, forced redesigns and retesting pushing things back even further. Compared to that, SpaceX's Starship HLS is almost running in its own timeline, a parallel project moving at its own Silicon Valley-style pace. And to SpaceX's credit, they're not just talking, they're testing. A lot. They've reportedly completed over 20 major flight hardware and subsystem tests. Among them, a full-scale environmental control and life support system test, using an actual cabin module with human participants to simulate oxygen-nitrogen temperature and humidity controls in a lunar environment. The human-in-the-loop test bed four people working inside a Starship cabin simulator to measure life support performance under real metabolic loads. Full-scale mock-ups of the HLS interior and exterior for drop testing, studying how landing legs will behave on actual lunar regolith. Lunar Raptor engine tests proving these engines can throttle down to incredibly low thrust levels, essential for a gentle touchdown on the moon. Cold start demonstrations in vacuum conditions for both surface and vacuum-optimized Raptors. Power system demos for the Starship Propellant Depot, testing how power will be generated and distributed in orbit. Docking adapter qualification, the system that will physically connect Starship to Orion in lunar orbit. And yes, even micrometeoroid debris impact radar and software validation tests are already underway. The Starship program is quietly, but confidently, moving toward its next major milestone, Flight 12, the first test flight featuring SpaceX's new Block 3 vehicles. Originally, this mission was supposed to fly with Booster 18, but after B-18's unexpected explosion attention quickly shifted to its successor, Booster 19, now set to take the stage. Despite the setback, SpaceX still aims to launch in the first quarter of 2026, and so far that target looks surprisingly solid. On November 25th, the first components of B-19 began arriving at the Mega Bay in Boca Chica, marking the start of assembly. Over the next five days, SpaceX moved fast. Four major sections were already spotted being stacked, most belonging to the booster's central structure, which houses the massive fuel tanks and domes. The upper and lower segments, the forward section and aft engine area, are still to come, but that's exactly what we'd expect at this stage of the build. If we look back at B-18's assembly timeline, we can get a rough idea of what's next. The liquid oxygen tank section typically requires about seven segments, while the methane area adds another three or four. Then there's one or two pieces for the interstage and forward dome area, plus the special components, like the fuel transfer tube, that make up the final stack. At this pace, all of Booster 19's sections could be complete and stacked by mid-December. But remember, the booster is only half the story. The Starship upper stage, known as Ship 39, is just as critical for the success of Flight 12. At the time of this update, S-39 is waiting inside Mega Bay 2, likely undergoing final inspections before it's sent to the Massey test site for a full series of cryogenic trials. Once that's done, it'll go through engine installation, cryogenic testing, and a static fire campaign before returning to Mega Bay 2 to receive its payload system and flight termination hardware. At the heart of all these efforts lies one shared dream, building a base on the moon. NASA's original vision was bold. By 2027, construction would begin on a permanent lunar outpost known as Artemis Station, a long-term home for humanity beyond Earth. 
The plan was to send the first crew for a one-year stay in 2028, marking the first true era of lunar living. But with Artemis III now slipping to no earlier than mid-2027, the entire timeline for building that base has become uncertain. Meanwhile, halfway across the world, another power has its eyes set on the same prize. China is pushing forward with its own lunar program, the International Lunar Research Station, a joint project with Russia, and it's moving with a methodical precision that's hard to ignore. The goal of functional lunar outpost near the moon's south pole by around 2035. China's roadmap is split into three phases, Phase 1, Reconnaissance. Phase 2, Construction. Phase 3, Habitation. Right now, China is about midway through Phase 1, focusing on robotic exploration and data collection. The Chang'e series of missions forms the backbone of this reconnaissance phase. Every landing builds a deeper understanding of the lunar environment mapping terrain, analyzing soil, and scouting locations for future human landings. Next comes Phase 2 and 3 Construction and Habitation. These stages will transform the moon from a robotic outpost into a livable environment. China plans to use in situ resource utilization, essentially building with lunar materials instead of shipping everything from Earth. The Chang'e 8 mission set for 2028 will demonstrate this technology. Its rover will gather lunar soil, press it into molds, and bake it into bricks under intense heat forming building blocks that can be stacked into roads, landing pads, and radiation shielding walls. It's a brilliant strategy, one that turns the moon's own surface into the foundation for human infrastructure. Power will be critical for that plan. In 2025, China and Russia announced a collaboration to develop a nuclear power plant on the moon, leveraging Rosatom's decades of expertise in compact reactor design. That reactor could provide the steady energy needed for construction lighting and even 3D printing lunar materials. Once that groundwork is laid, Phase 3 begins human deployment. Initially, the outpost will be completely robotic, operated, and maintained from Earth. Only after safety and systems are fully validated will Chinese astronauts begin their long-duration stays.